Okay, so I was checking out the Linux Mint blog today and it looks like they've gone ahead and released Linux Mint version Debian. This is actually a completely Debian based version. It's apparently going to be rolling release, which is very cool, but you've got a very generic blog article on it giving some information. You've got the download mirrors, the known problems with this version, and some brief info on it. Here it is, it's based on a rolling distribution of Debian testing. It comes only as a 32-bit live DVD with a GNOME desktop, and the purpose is to look identical to the main edition and provide the same functionality while using Debian as a base. And this is basically, I think, going to show that they don't have to have Ubuntu to have a decent uh, Ubuntu-style distribution. Uh, basically, they can have all of the same functionality without having to rely upon a larger distro like Ubuntu. But you've got some frequently asked questions down here. It's going to be 100% compatible with Debian testing or Squeeze, but not compatible with Ubuntu. So they are making this, uh, I guess it's just a way for them to step out on their own, which is very cool. Uh, how does it compare to Ubuntu? Why doesn't it come in 64-bit yet? Things like that. All of these will be available on the linuxmint.com blog. Go ahead and take a look at that for yourself. But let's go ahead and just take a look at the installer. So you'll see here I'm running within a virtual box right now, and if I come to install Linux Mint, this looks and feels just like the existing Mint at this point. You know, you've got your Mint menu, just exactly what you would expect to see. You've got a load of pre-installed applications, just like you'd expect out of Mint. But the installer looks just a little bit different. Here we go, we've got select our language, select your location. I'll go ahead and pick Kentucky Louisville, because that's about as close as I think I can get. Uh, we'll pick the generic keyboard, whatever is selected. And this is a little bit different, uh, but it is sort of familiar. It looks a lot like some other distributions would handle it, probably Debian. But we've got dev SDA and SDA5 for swap. We'll go ahead and tell it to format this, format it as root, and use that file type, that's fine, and use this as swap. And there we go, we've got 30 gigs of space and a little over a gig of swap. So that should work. Go ahead and hit forward on that. We'll give my name, username, password, something really simple. And this will be Mint Debian. Then we'll hit forward. Now we're going to install Grub. It gives you the option where to store it. I've only got one hard drive on this. It's a virtual, so it doesn't really have all that many specifications. But there we go. We've got all of our settings. We're ready to install. And we've got this little slideshow, I guess, while we're installing it. It's formatting for us right now. And wow, that really sped up. I'm not actually making any, any changes to the video. It's doing all this on its own. But while we're waiting on that, this edition is based on Debian testing, aims to be as similar as possible to the main Linux Mint edition while taking advantage of the robustness and efficiency of Debian, basically saying without the the bugginess that might be Ubuntu, the problems that some people do have with Ubuntu. But let's just wait and see what happens with this. Let's see if we've got any problems out of the box or if it works beautifully. Who knows? All right, and you'll see here we're at the GNU Grub version 1.98. That's actually Grub version 2 that you're seeing on most modern distros at this point. It says version 2010.7.10, so it's actually the July 10th version. So uh, I'm guessing it hasn't been updated since then, probably with good reason. We're looking at Linux Mint with uh, Linux kernel version 2.6.32. So as far as being up to date, not exactly, but for Debian, it, it's actually a whole lot newer than I expected. And we're ready to log in. Give it my password here. In just a second, we should be in Linux Mint Debian. There we go. This looks and feels a lot like the traditional Linux Mint experience, just what I would expect. We've got our Welcome to Linux Mint pop-up menu that starts up here, all the documentation, project info. We're going to tell it not to show this at startup and close it, just because I don't want to see it anymore. I'll go ahead and hit the updater, just because since it's a rolling release, I kind of expect there to be a bunch of updates available. Alright, refreshing the packages, and as expected we have a bunch of updates, we've got 265 recommended updates available, starting with Mint stuff, and as it moves on down we've got a bunch of Debian based stuff that is probably just newer versions, you see here we're going from libfam 2.70 to 2.70.16, oh that's 16 to 17, sorry looking at it backwards, newer version of Network Manager, and just loads and loads of new things. That's most likely just moving from one version and testing to the newer. So we'll just tell it to install everything, cross our fingers, and hope for the best.
test. Luckily, this is a uh, virtual machine, so I don't really have to worry about it. We'll see how that does as far as updates and update speed. It's actually using a decent amount of my connection speed, so I'm not disappointed at this point. But if we go into the menus, we should have a decent list of software available. Look over here on the right, under all, we've got a lot of stuff that comes with it. The Mint Backup tool is there available, so let's take a look at it. There we go, Backup and Restore Files, Backup and Restore Software Selection, just as you would expect to find from it. For some reason, the download speed changed significantly. My guess would be we hit a bad repository. And it's a Debian repo, so it shouldn't be a problem, but it's just running slow at the moment. So what else do we have? Back under here, under all, we've got loads and loads of software. Really, this just looks and feels identical to Linux Mint that I'm already used to. But we'll keep going down, lots and lots of stuff, root terminal. Yeah, just a lot of stuff there. Of course, it also includes the Windows wireless drivers, the Indus wrapper, GTK tool that you would expect to find with Mint. I know a lot of people do have problems with wireless drivers, and having that Windows wireless driver that works, that, that can make or break it for a lot of people, because having to install Indus wrapper on a wired connection makes it a little bit more difficult to have that wireless... Yeah, anyway. So we're on a Mint install. It looks a lot like traditional Mint. We have a software manager that probably isn't going to work right now. It looks and feels just like the existing one. Total of about 30,000 packages available, so very cool. Uh, we've got the package manager, which should be Synaptic. The control center, that is just the standard GNOME control center. Yeah, for the most part, just wanted to give you a quick look at it and let you know that it's. it seems to be pretty much the default Mint installation just based around Debian now. It said it was going to be a little rough around the edges, and it probably is, but it is still a very early release, and it should grow and change over time. It's got all of the standard Mint wallpapers, the standard Mint theme, look and feel, all of that fun stuff, and a lot of pre-installed software as you would come to expect from Mint. So if you want to, download it and give it a try. It's about an 850 megabyte DVD download. Uh, like you see here, it works decently well in VirtualBox. I've uh, been pretty, pretty impressed with it so far. I'm going to take another look at it just to see what software comes pre-installed but uh, and what else is available in the repositories. But it's using all of the Debian repos as opposed to Ubuntu, as you would expect from a Debian-based system now. It's also got the Mint repositories. You see there at the very top, it, you can't really see it right now, but it is hitting the Mint repositories as well. So it's hopefully going to be a very nice mashup, meshup, mesh, mixup, maxup between uh, Debian and Linux Mint, and hopefully a, a start of a lot of growth for Mint as a, as a distribution of its own. But uh, let me know what you think of this idea, what you think it's going to do or not do for Linux Mint in the long run in the comment section below. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you.